Do you have a three-way light that requires dimming and you're frustrated with the lack of three-way dimming options? Let's find out how to tackle this with open source Tasmoda firmware. So in this video, we're going to tackle an issue that many people have, including myself. We want a three-way dimming circuit using all smart switches flashed with open source firmware such as Tasmoda or ESP Home. Currently, as of this video, there isn't a product out there that we can use, and I've covered the Martin Jerry three-way dimmer, but it doesn't have an ESP8266, and unfortunately, that leaves it in the Tuya cloud, which is definitely a no-go for me. So we're going to use a standard smart switch, and we're going to use a dimmer that we previously covered. This is the MJSDO2. Let's get to it. So one of the common three-way switch wiring methods I see in the U.S. is Electricity comes in, as shown in the diagram on the left, goes to the first switch, and then there's a traveler over to the secondary switch, and then from the secondary switch, that feeds the light bulb. This allows you to toggle the light on either side of the room and have full control. Now, I've covered the Mohs three-way smart switch, which works great in a situation like this, but of course we want dimming. We have covered the Martin Jerry three-way dimmer, but then again, there's no ESP8266. Now, if your switches aren't wired like this in your home, you may have to consult the three-way switch wiring diagrams that we leave in the description in the video below. I'm gonna go ahead and show some steps on the wiring diagrams on how to convert this over to using one smart switch and one dimmer. So in this situation, what we first wanna do is remove the first switch on the left. For the traveler, we won't be using the traveler anymore, so, so I put wire nuts on the traveler on either side. That way, in case it does get hooked up by someone else, it's not exposed wiring. The hot will get wire nutted and go over to the switch that controls the light. Once you've made sure that that switch works, then what we'll do is we'll swap it with the dimmer. So you do like you've done with other smart switches. You'll have your line that comes in and then you'll have your load and of course, you will have to tie in the common. Now, if you do have grounds, go ahead and tie those in. We're just not showing the grounds in these diagrams. Then once you've verified your dimming works, let's move on to the next step. In the last step, you wanna go back to the first box where you remove the switch and just, we're gonna put a simple smart switch in that toggles on and off. You'll notice we're not using the load wire on this smart switch, so simply cap it off or do not connect the wire depending on your smart switch used. Yeah, you will need to also tie in the common or the neutral since you will be needing to provide power to this switch because this switch basically turns into a Wi-Fi button per se. So you could do this with such as a Wemos D1 Mini or a Node MCU, but this is already in a package that everyone knows as a light switch and it makes it pretty easy to put into your normal wall. In a future video, we will cover this with showing another dimmer instead of a smart switch to get dimming control on both sides of the room. But in this situation, we only needed dimming controls on one side of the room, so we did it with a one smart switch. Now at this point, this switch isn't gonna do anything, so let's head on and check out the rules to apply to each switch. So the rules we're gonna show in this video we're using the Tasmoto Open Source Firmware Project, which is a great piece of software to utilize on all your ESP8266 based switches. We've covered in various videos on how to flash it using USB methods and soldering, as well as using the Tuya Convert method using over the air. So if you need assistance on how to flash your switch, check back in some of the other videos. We probably covered it. Now to apply the rules, once you go to the web GUI on the switch you're using for this project, Simply go into the GUI and click the console button. Once you're in the console, you'll be able to copy and paste the command straight into here. And let's go check out the rules. So in this project, we're using the ASINX dimmer, which is the same as the Martin Jerry dimmers we've used. The standard rules are for rule one, switch to state, which is the minus key, will actually send the dimmer minus command. When the user pushes up, it'll actually will send the dimmer plus to do the dimming up and down on the light itself. When the user holds the dim minus for as a long press action, which is state three, we will actually will send the dimmer of 30% command. Now, of course, you can change that if you like a different value, but that was some of the values that we liked. Same thing again, when the user holds the plus key as a long press, 
will send the dimmer of 100% to immediately jump to 100% value of dimming. Pretty typical on the first set of rules so far. Now in the second rule, we're going to monitor the power state of the dimmer itself. So for power 1, the state of 1 when the dimmer turns on will send an MQTT message over to the secondary switch to turn its LED power on. This will keep the LED power lights in sync even when the dimmer is turned on on the other side. Now we'll also change the state of the LED power on the dimmer itself to keep it in sync as well. So just the opposite when the dimmer turns off, which is the state of zero, we'll actually we'll send the same MQTT message of LED power, but we'll use zero this time to turn the LED off. And we'll change the state of the LED on the dimmer itself again. So for rule three, Things will get a little interesting here, but just stick with me. So when the dimmer changes its state to be greater than or equal to 70, we will set a variable 1 of 15. Now when the dimmer sets its state to less than 70%, we'll set the variable 1 to 85%. Now also at system boot, we'll set that variable to 15 as a default, and then will monitor for an event called TOG DIM, short for Toggle Dimmer, and will set the dimming level of the variable that was just set. You may be wondering what is all this variable 115 nonsense. So what we're doing, and there was a couple ways to do this that I thought through the process, but the variables seem to be the most efficient. Since I tried toggling some rules back and forth, but every time you do toggle a rule, it writes to the flash memory on the switch. And we want to kind of keep that down due to we do have a limited number of cycles. So let's just store a value in memory. So what happens is when the dimming value goes up, we will set a threshold to be at lower. And that will allow us to do a long press on the switch down the hallway so we can toggle it from low to high back and forth. So when the dimmer goes above 70%, we'll go ahead and set the memory down to 15%. So when it gets toggled by the switch on the other side, or if it gets toggled by the switch on the other side, when it sends over its event, it'll toggle to that lower dimming level. And vice versa, when the dimmer is down below 70%, will set a memory value of 85%, so when the switch on the other side is long pressed, we'll be able to toggle back to the higher value. So it's a pretty simple way of using a smart switch on the other side, that way we can do a short press and a long press action. So on the secondary switch, it's gonna get two very simple rules. One thing to note, in Tasmodo on the secondary switch, you will need to make sure and set your switch to actually have a switch one value if you want to use these rules. This will allow you to do a short press and a long press switch action on your switch. And don't forget to set your switch mode of either five or six based on the resting state of your switch. Consult the Tasmodo wiki if you want a little help on setting your switch modes and everything but it's real simple to set your switches and we've covered it in various other videos in the past for doing long press actions in three ways and i'll leave a link to that down in the description of the video so back to the rules we're doing one simple rule of rule one on switch one state two which is a short press it's going to simply send over an mqtt command of power to the main dimmer so really simple, push the button once, it's gonna send over the power toggle to either go on or off based on the state of the dimmer. Pretty quick, easy. Now rule two, if you remember, we'd set the event of tog dim. Well, here we will use it. So we'll set a switch one of state three, which is a long press, to publish a command of the event of tog dim, and that's it. So now, when the user on the other side of the hallway does a long press action on that switch, it will send over the event to toggle the dimmer. And that will toggle from that low to high or high to low of the dimming value of the dimmer. So it's a real simple way to set up a dimmer in a three-way configuration 
and toggle the dimming value without having to use a dimmer on the other side of the hull. And that's all there is to it. You can toggle the dimmer itself. You can change the dimming value, of course, using the up and down buttons. You could also do another option on the dimmer itself for a long press of the power option, which we didn't show in this video. On the secondary switch on the other side of the hull, you can turn that on and off and you can see the LED power will stay in sync even though you're changing it using Home Assistant itself. Now you may be asking how do we set this switch up in Home Assistant. Well simply set up the dimmer just like you normally would in Home Assistant and it'll work like it should and you don't have to mess with the secondary switch at all since everything will be handled by the primary switch. So I appreciate you watching. You'll find all the links to all the rules in the video description below, along with any product links that we use in this video. I appreciate Asinex for sending over a dimmer to use in this project. If you got any questions, make sure and comment down below. Give us a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure and click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you can check out our next video and live stream. And y'all take care.